For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini, National Treasury Intergovernmental Relations Deputy Director General Malujeng Maleni joins me to discuss Municipal Money Initiative. What is Municipal Money Initiative and why was it formed? Okay, Municipal Money Initiative is an open data portal that uh, presents a municipal financial money uh, that uh, in a very simple accessible way. So this is a data that has been verified uh, and uh, we believe that it is a reliable information at this point. So the aim is to empower the public you know beyond what we have been doing now so that uh, this information can be used effectively for the public to hold municipalities more accountable. The whole idea is really to demystify the, the data in the manner in which we are presenting it using different uh, medium and tools so that it can be educational uh, and, and that people can more or less relate to the information in respect of whether they are sophisticated in their finance uh, understanding. Why is it important for National Treasury to share financial information about municipal money with the public? First of all, I think we, we think it is, it is the right time uh, in terms of the quality of data that we have. Um, because we have been, since we introduced these reforms in, the, in, the budget, in, in how they budget and report in 2003, we have been collecting this information. And uh, as you will remember, the, the, the local government functioning is contingent upon effective citizenry that is able to hold local government accountable. So part of making this information at this time when we think it's more or less, you know, uh, ready to be shared publicly in terms of its reliability and quality, that uh, it will go a long way towards empowering the citizens to play their role effectively, particularly at this point in time when there is so much, you know, mistrust in terms of whether government is using the money, you know, efficiently, whether it's not being wasted. So being, making information much more easily accessible and transparent it's, uh, it's, it's something that we thought it would be useful. So this is a step higher in getting the information out there. Tell us more about the sort of financial indicators you have selected. For example, how do you assess the cash coverage that a municipality has or whether a municipality is spending its capital budget? So we, in, 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 in terms of how municipalities are reported and how we assess their financial health and their state of finance, there are lots and lots of indicators that we have uh, in the system. So for us to select the ones that we are showing in the portal at the moment, which is in a way an example, and also uh, th those that we think from our interactions with uh, civil society, uh, that maybe those ones could be the one that could be much more useful as the beginning start, you know but it's not limiting them to those indicators. So when you look at uh, issues like financial health, we say we look at cash, how much um, cash does the municipality has at the end of the year. So if it is in overdraft, then we say the municipality is in trouble. So there's a problem in financial management because municipalities always have to have cash uh, so that it can cover its expenses. So that's why we talk about cash coverage to say how many months does can a municipality cover its expenses from the reserves that they have should anything happen. So though, and then we tell the citizens to say how do you know when it's not right that there's a problem. So and the way we kind of illustrate is also kind of educational and empowering. So there are lots of them that we have but it's not limited to those. So the, those that are sophisticated programmers and, and analysts because the data is also available as raw. They can pull it out and do a whole manner of combinations in the analysis. Tell us about your partnership with Code for South Africa. You see, because we wanted this information to be um, accessible and to speak to the people, so uh, we then realized that it may not be appropriate for us to be the ones that decide on what will be much more valuable or meaningful to the people. So hence, we then deployed um, or partnered with uh, Code SA, which is a, an NGO that is active uh, in using technology to, uh, to empower public to be much more informed to engage uh, in government. 
So they then helped us in terms of uh, the design uh, of the portal uh, and also in terms of now engaging with the, with the public, with the citizens, you know. So, so, so I think that was the whole idea. So then became key in terms of the design and the development. How was the data collected? So the data, as I said earlier, has been collected uh, through um, our by National Treasury, uh, and it's part of the legislated um, requirements that uh, municipalities report uh, on a monthly, on a quarterly, and annually some of the information. So as I said, we have been collecting this since 2003, uh, obviously the quality, because that was a major reform in terms of reporting for, for, for local government. So, but we think the quality for the past five years is of such nature that it is just reliable for us to begin to go public of it. And also it has been, we gazetted every quarter since, by, since, since 2003. Yeah? So we, we, gazette, uh, we have been gazetting this information and make it available in our website, maybe not as easily as we, have, we are trying to make in the, in the ministry. So it's, it's already out there, it's just that we are opening it now for the public uh, to begin to engage with it in a much more deeper way, in the way that they will choose also to engage with it. How often is it updated? Uh, this will be updated every quarter. So because every quarter we are required by legislation to publish um, uh, this uh, information. Uh, so after we have published, so which means that we have verified it, validated it, the municipalities have confirmed that the numbers are right, then we publish them in terms of the Gazette, as we have normally do, then we will open to the, to the portal once it, it's, uh, it's published. Is there another way to access information for members of the public except for the internet? Yeah, so we, we have tried to make it uh, much easily as accessible because uh, people can access it, you know, through their mobile telephones. Uh, obviously, you need data to do that. So we believe that if it's accessible through mobile telephone, we are talking about internet, free internet zones, uh, hotspot Wi-Fi in the library, and that where people can go and access. And also, you can download also and print so, so, so I think those are the ways that we think the ordinary people, you know, that may not even have a laptop or a desktop, uh, may also with their, you know, their mobile phone be able to access it, this information. Do you think sharing information with the public will decrease the level of corruption in municipalities? You know, I think there are benefits in releasing this information. First of all, uh, a, an informed public you know, will be able to, uh, to, 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 to hold municipalities accountable, right? Because they will be able, even when they engage in their, in their IDP hearings uh, with the budgets, they can begin to ask the right kind of questions because now they will be knowing, you know, what is the source of this money and how much money is collected and how much has been allocated for what and how has it been spent and how has it been accounted for. So they will be able to ask this hard question. The municipalities will also know that, you know, almost everybody is watching. You know, people could be watching in their, in their taxi, you know, you could be checking. You could uh, also, uh, you know, WhatsApp it to somebody if you see something that is quite interesting to you. So it is quite important. But I think it's also important from the municipality point of view because I think a lot of the times the reason why we have some of these protests is because this, there's a mystery regarding the finances of, uh, of municipalities, you know. People, so once people know um, and they also realize what is the source of funding, how much municipality has, and then how, what are the limitations in terms of what could be spent, right? So, and then where is the money and what, what are they planning to spend money on? And then when they realize that actually the responsibility is not only them to call them accountant, but it's for them also to pay for services because they realize how this money is going to benefit and that their municipality compared to the next municipality would actually perform worse if they don't do their part. Because you can also do comparisons between municipalities and look at what makes another municipality succeed and another one fail. So I think for me it will make both us as the citizens, the public, to be responsible and accountable and municipalities also as government to be responsible and accountable. Okay. So I think it's a win-win situation. Thank you. 
That was National Treasury Intergovernmental Relations Deputy Director General Malijeng Ngaleni speaking to Krima Media's policy about municipal money initiative.